Hi guys, I'm Bree. And I'm Allie. This is Off Script. If you think about it, books are potential scripts for movies. When this adaptation happens, typically it's disappointing because they went off script. In this series, we will be talking about how off script they went. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Off Script. Yes, we're back. Yeah, we took a little break. My mental breakdown is over <laughs> for now. Is mine? <laughs> No. <laughs> doing better than me you can actually record an episode <laughs> that's true oh um, my gosh well we're at season five episode 15 this is our last episode of the, of season. the season you would have thought mm-hmm. i could have just powered through especially with it being such a <laughs> short episode but no my brain was like absolutely not <laughs> Don't even try it. So, Shot to shit. <laughs> yeah. So you might be like, wait, you're not done. You have the magician still. Y'all, we bought, bit off more than we could chew with that one. <laughs> I, yeah, I think that's also partially where my stress came from. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. But that's okay because we're we're almost done. You're on what in the show? We're season three. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I'm on the book book three. Yeah. So we're so, almost, almost there. there. That'll be a little December treat for you. Mm-hmm. We so, probably won't do a Christmas one because we're doing that. <laughs> and this is our Christmas episode right here. Yeah. Because it is. It really is. You guys, because let me tell you what it's all about. When the hog father, a.k.a. Santa Claus, goes missing, Death steps in to help out and his adopted granddaughter, Susan, embarks on a rescue mission. Mm-hmm. Very Memory cute. before Christmas. Here we come. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so... I guess that was my picture. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're I back. I think there's anything. All right. <laughs> we're back to then be on a break again. I know. <laughs> you guys. Man. Oh, man. Okay. So our author is Terry Pratchett, director Vadim Jean, screenplay writer Vadim Jean, Jean mm-hmm. and audiobook reader Bill Nye, Peter oh, Serafinowitz, and Cyan Clifford. You didn't know Bill Nye was it? He did all the. Um, he was the whole thing. No, 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 no. He was the the adapt like the the what's it called? The little star, the cliff notes. He, there were cliff notes. Yeah. Anytime the music happened, you go <gasps> and then it said something. That would have been a cliff note. Little. I was trying to figure out. I even Sierra asked me because Sierra listened to this one with me, and she was like, "What's that?" And I was like, "Sometimes they do that for like a chapter." ending but this seems like a weird no, chapter for cliff notes <laughs> oh my goodness yeah because brie read it yeah I or did listened audio, to but... it i mean mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. i thought it was really good i thought she did a really good job you mean he no cyan was the main girl the entire time i don't think i had the same audiobook oh, okay because I did the website that john gave to yeah. us yeah who do you got let me see because i'm like there was you didn't have three girl. people? It, the girl was the main reader. No, it was a dude. Okay. Then it was no. a dude. The oh, whole, then that the sucks time. for you. Because this was really good. And it did. Uh, so she was the main reader the whole time. But then Peter was death. So he would come in with a very deep. Oh, boom. dude. That would have been cool. It yeah, was no. really cool. Oh. oh. I had Stephen Briggs. Just Stephen Briggs? Just Stephen Briggs. Uh, and so, like, here, let me play this for you. He was hilarious as death, though. Yeah. So this is who I had the whole uh, time. That's why I was like, Bill Nye? Never. Uh, yeah. yeah, let me, I don't know if I'll be able to find specifically him, because he was all intermingled. But he sounded just like Bill Nye, just reading. Like, he didn't do a voice or anything. That's amazing. But well, anyways, oh, bummer. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> Well, the book came out November 1996, and the movie came out December 17, 2006. That's 10 years. Wow. Yeah. What's crazy is I wouldn't think this came out in 2006, the movie. No, it looked much older. Yeah, it did. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of cool because they that was obviously a stylistic choice that they made. Or it was a budget choice. Or that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Definitely made by the BBC, and I could tell because it felt very much like Doctor Who. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what'd you do first? I read it first. I watched it first. I had to think because there. 
going to just say it now. They're very similar. So like, they I are. Really had to think about it. I was it's like, wait, really, what did I do first? It's kind of fun because it was, you know, Terry Pratchett. So it's very good omen like. Mm -hmm. And just like good omens, it's very similar. Mm -hmm. Which is funny because I kind of thought that Stardust would be similar. I know. Too. So now I'm wondering if it was Terry Pratchett who went into good omens. Oh, he no, wasn't he was alive. Still alive. That's what I thought at first, too. Hmm. I know. Oh, I'm interested. I know. I That's, don't have an answer for that. Yeah. Sorry, guys, if you're intrigued, too. <laughs> Figure it out for us and let us know. Mm hmm. Um, what are your thoughts on the story? It's a nightmare for Christmas. How could I not like it? It was really cute. Yeah. I went into the movie like, what is happening? But then by the end, I was like, that was actually cute because I went in upset because one, I was stressed, right? <laughs> And instead of a two hour movie, it's a three hour show. Yeah. There are three episodes that are an hour each. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what the heck? I don't have time for this. Mm -hmm. But then I'm watching it and it was very enjoyable. And mm -hmm. so my mentality was kind of the same with the book. I'm like, I don't have time for this. But I enjoyed it. Yeah. It yeah. was good. It, it was, was really cute. fun. Mm -hmm. And why do we pick it? We picked it because this was a very much so requested one at the nerd party. Yeah. Like but quite was, a few people requested it i know and it sounded fun we were like oh maybe that's because originally it was supposed to be christmas with the cranks this year mm -hmm. but then i was like oh i guess we'll do hog father yeah since mm -hmm. we're we're doing our our listener picks but this mm -hmm. was a christmas one so we wanted to do it christmasy time yep all right i got some super fun facts for you author terry pratchett filmed his cameo he was stopped or his cameo was at the end of the movie where he was the toy maker Oh, I know. I had to go back and watch it. I, I was like, just oh going to say, I didn't even. <laughs> yeah. So he filmed his cameo. And then when he left, he was stopped at the airport by customs in Australia. Must have filmed it in Australia, I guess. He had a large box of plastic <laughs> teeth from set, which distressed the officials. He explained. So. Yes. Right. He explained the situation and pointed out they should probably be more concerned with a large box marked death. But <laughs> they were not. <laughs> oh, so cute. Uh. Okay, Neil Plan Nigel, Nigel. sorry, <laughs> Planner, who played Mr. Sydney. I think that was the wizard, the the wizard with tea time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did the audiobook narration for 21 of the first 23 Discworld novels, as well as multiple voices on three Discworld video games. Oh, wow. I know. That's and crazy. he got to be in the movie. That's cool. Isn't that cool? Oh, I bet he loved that. I know. That wasn't who did yours, right? No. No, it wasn't. No. Okay. I wish. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, we were just saying it was three episodes. It was actually two, shown in two 90-minute oh. episodes on TV and in the cinemas. Oh, cool. But now on Prime, there are three episodes. Oh, it was on Prime. I had to watch it on YouTube. It wouldn't oh. pull up in Prime for me. It was on Prime. What the heck? <laughs> I mean, I had commercials. Did you have commercials on YouTube? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And weird. it was always at the funniest parts. <laughs> like, I know, right? It'd be like <laughs> death being really serious and then like Geico. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I was like, what? Oh my gosh. So death is wearing a robe with Born to Rune on the back mm -hmm. in a reference to Terry Pratchett's Discworld soul music, oh, which also features death and his associates in The Wizards. Nice. I actually think that's the first one because Hogfather is technically like the third one in its own series that's a part of this huge Discworld series. Mm -hmm. And so I actually think that's one of the ones that's in this. Was that the series. one you tried to read? It's one of them, yeah. Because, oh. guys, I tried to read the four that are in the Hogfather's universe, but holy shit, getting any of these books anywhere is Seriously. one of the toughest things I've ever Which done. Which is so weird. I know it's apparently a very, very popular. Oh well, yeah! Like, and it's Christmas time. All of yeah. the like books that I found on Libby, like or libraries that I found with it, they would have multiple of the book. It's just that like there were hundreds of people waiting for it, and I was so like, "What the crazy, heck?" Right? And then last one. This is the first live adaption, film adaption for the Discworld novels. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I wonder, does that mean there's been I more? I was just going to say, are there cartoon versions then? If so, I need to oh, go watch this. I don't know. That would be fun to cover. That would be fun. <laughs> because literally, like, after I read this, I was like, this would be fun characters to get involved with more than just this one story. Yeah. Because they each had, like, the, there's a lot to all of them that I'm like, ooh, I want to know more about right. you. Yeah. Exactly. Or, like, the fact that death falls in love with a human. 
when was that not in this book oh okay yeah. i was like i missed something big <laughs> no 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 prior like because oh, how cause... else is death susan's grandfather <laughs> yeah. well because he, he adopted oh yeah duh, he adopted but again that's like not him falling in love per se but yeah. him loving, loving the, human the human enough to yeah. adopt it yeah oh okay mm-hmm. all right shall we get started let's okay so we start off with these high wizards and the chancellor is telling his fellow wizards he doesn't want to share a bathroom anymore because it's disgusting it's unhygienic and he instructed one of his people to make him his own bathroom it happens but not at the beginning i was just gonna <laughs> say i was like that did not that's not how it starts no it's not it, how it starts, starts with susan yeah in the show so it starts at this part yeah okay so susan is the governess to the house and a girl comes in saying there's a monster in my room and susan's like oh, okay i'll go take care of it and she's stopped by the people who own the house so like hired her and she explains what she's doing and um and they're like oh that's so smart of you that'll like mm-hmm. get rid of the child's fears by faking a fight and i'm like okay like you're saying this in front of the kids like yeah. if you want it to work yeah. don't say it in front of the kids <laughs> And so she goes in the room, a whole kerfuffle happens, and it spooked a lot of the adults because she comes out with the bent, um, like, Crowbar. fire poker <laughs> thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. And when she, the adults are like, okay, good job. And they go back to their little party. And once they leave, she comes out and she really had a monster and she threw it into the snow. And she's worried that her, like, past is coming back because she's, like, starting to see the future again or something like that. And um, she's been normal for almost two years now. Mm hmm. That happens. So we're with this Lord Downey and this figure comes in and he's like, we will give the guild three million dollars if you take care of the old fat man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so basically we're in a whole nother land now. Right. And there's like this magical, well, not another land, but like we're not with Susan anymore. And Downey is shocked because he this fat man doesn't exist, but. They already deposited the money, so he's like, uh, okay, we're gonna, I'll set my one of my people on to do this for you. And it's Mr. Tea Time, or however you say it. <laughs> Tea Time. I was gonna say, he was very like, you have to pronounce it. I know. And Did he your would do audiobook it reader time. read it right every time? No. Okay, mine didn't either. No. So I think it was a gag. Okay. I think we're supposed to call him Mr. Tea Time, but I think Tea Time's supposed to be like, no, it's Tea Time or something yeah. like that. And he only, my audiobook reader only read it right when, when Tea, tea Time was. Okay. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I wonder, if, I'm sure that's how it was written then. Cause mm-hmm. I was like, why would was, she read it right so I know what her name or his name is? <laughs> What's funny is in the show, uh-huh. they say it how he wants it pronounced every time they talk right. to him. So then I was confused because I was like, wait, I thought that was supposed to be the yeah. gag. So but, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to call him tea time. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I have a feeling that's probably something that gets explained in a different one. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe. Potentially. Mm-hmm. So Mr. Tea Time's evolved, but he's really odd. And he shows up without Downey even realizing it. And he's been planning how to kill death already. Or not death. Uh, Hogfather. Hogfather already. And then he has, he did say, I've also been planning how to kill death. And he's like, you're crazy. You can't kill death. Mm-hmm. But he didn't say anything because Tea Time's spooky. Mm-hmm. That happens. And I really love it because freaking Tea Time sounds like Johnny Depp as Willy Wonka. Yes, he does. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's so funny. So I was like, I wonder if Johnny watched this and was like, mm, that's Wonka. <laughs> that's my inspiration right there. <laughs> so we're learning all about this previous governess that Susan took over for. And she threatened the kids with monsters all the time. And it pissed Susan off because she's like, great, now I have to go correct everything that's just happened. And they ask, the kids ask if the hog father's real. And she's like, of course he's real. What are you talking about? Uh, in the show, we don't it's so hard show movie what is it i I know know. (laughs) um but there's never talk of the previous governess but the rest of it does happen Mm -hmm. so these three guys are waiting in a bar for tea time and they're getting a little nervous because they're like oh my gosh i hear tea time's kind of crazy blah 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 and they he shows up and he's like i have ten thousand dollars for each of you if you help me with this task and they're like oh that's a good idea and but then they got upset because magic's involved and they weren't told that magic was going to be involved and a wizard student shows up and also the best locksmith in the business and they're like what the heck did we get ourselves into this happens (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Except for this time, uh, one of the things that they're upset about is like one of them knows that tea time is an assassin men- makes mention of it while they're waiting. And another one's like, what assassins are involved? I don't want to be involved in this. And then tea time shows up. So we learn a little about death and that he helps people pass on. But there's this another little creature that helps creatures pass on the little death rat. <laughs> I wish this was in the show so much more because it's in the book almost the whole entire book. He was so cute. And he's just in the show for like a split second. I know. Which I mean, I guess at least I got him for a second. But he was so cute. Yeah. <laughs> they even did that. Twas a night before Christmas. <laughs> and all or hogs watch. And all through the house. Not a creature was stirring. Not even a mouse because it was dead or something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cute so now we're on a horse and carriage with this driver ernie and he's talking to tea time so they're on this carriage with him and the other guys are there as well and he's ernie's sharing all these stories on the way and finally they get to where they're supposed to go and tea time tells him hey take us through this portal and he's like oh no no i never go through the portal but this is how you do it and then tea time kills him and they go through this portal and basically he was bringing them to the tooth fairy Mm -hmm. castle Mm -hmm. i was really glad to see this because this is kind of the point when me and sierra started listening to it on our troll hunting day Mm -hmm. and so like i was paying attention but like you know she would make a comment i would make a comment or something would happen and we would have to stop listening or whatever Mm -hmm. so at this part i thought that they had somehow just stolen a cart Mm -hmm. and got a random dude to drive it for them that wasn't part of their group but i for the life of me could not figure i was like this just seems this felt out of place and then when i watched it, i was like oh my gosh that's what that was was it before this when they knocked uh banjo's tooth out is that how they got him to come or they knocked his tooth out later i think that's how they get the like tooth oh wait so it was right before because they had her, they had the other tooth fairy. It was to get the one tooth fairy to come show up. Okay. And so it was right before the cart. Okay. So the auditors are watching and commenting as they see tea time doing his thing. And when one of them slipped up and said the word me, which they aren't allowed to do. So he was like, he said he quoted something, but used the word me. And they're like, no, 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 we are a unit. And they smited him. And then a new one came. Mm -hmm. that that was interesting that didn't happen in the show you do see the auditors watching tea time but that does not happen yeah it's the same four like the whole time yeah or however many there Mm -hmm. were was it four i thought it was three in the show i I can't remember remember. i don't remember so death came and escorted ernie off to where he needed to go so we got a chance to see death do his Mm -hmm. thing Mm -hmm. and it was like it just reminded me that like death isn't a bad guy no like you always are scared and think of death as a bad guy well he's just helping people move on like he doesn't Mm -hmm. do the killing yeah exactly he's just there to yeah help i know i thought it was so sweet i just think he's a hilarious character i know he was good (laughs) so there's this little mouse which we talked about and he's a little grim reaper mouse and he's reaping when he sees the hog father come and deliver presents and something happens the hog father was gone and death comes in with albert his little guy and his little guy his friend is what is he companion i guess yeah and he's like something has gone wrong and then he dresses up as the fo- in the hog father outfit and goes off with the pigs <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> and so actually except for this one he, he like it was really cool cuz you then got to see like death has a wall of hourglasses and basically like when the hourglass is running up it's for that person and so he was looking and he saw the hog fathers and he's like hmm that's not right Uh so then he went to go find him and then that's how he did that yes so susan is hanging out in beers which is like this pub for the undead and like monsters and stuff and so there's this boogeyman there and he's making fun of her like why are you here you're living blah 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 and she puts him in his place and then here comes the death rat and the raven. And the raven's like, your grandfather is pretending to be the hog father. And she's like, this is not real. That's not happening. Nope. A raven's not talking to me. Oh, my gosh. But you would think if she doesn't want to be involved with this, she wouldn't go to a bar that's for undead. Yeah. Well, that doesn't happen in the show. So that's probably why they didn't have it happen in yeah. the show. Because you're right. Why would you be going there? Mm-hmm. That would be stupid. Yep. So Death and Albert are doing their rounds, delivering presents for Hogs Watch. Susan went to bed, or when Susan was in bed, 
Twyla, which is her little girl she watches, comes in. And she's like, there's a boogeyman under my bed. And she went in and she threatened it and was like, get out of here. Go to that other house. There's like something going on over there. And he's like, oh, I like that. And then he goes. But then here comes Death Mouse and Raven saying like, you really need to go see your grandfather. So all that happens except for the Death Mouse and Raven. Mm -hmm. So now we're at tea time and he's at the castle with the tooth fairies. And the wizard is super nervous. The one that he has brought. He did what he needed to. And he's like, can I go now? And tea time's like, um, no, I want you to go help Mr. Brown with the magical locks. And Banjo, Chicken Wire and whatever the other brother's name are is like, hey, we found this guard. What should we do? Tea time. <laughs> Medium Dave. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> And tea time's like, oh, come on. We need to go convince him to get out of his hiding spot because it it will not it'd be too messy if we just let him go. Yeah, that happens. Mm -hmm. Death and Su death came to Susan's house because I want to say he was delivering presents. Is that why he mm -hmm. went there? That's exactly mm -hmm. why. Mm -hmm. And he confronted Susan and she's like, what are you doing? And she's like, he's like, well, the real hog father is dead. So I'm taking over. <laughs> He's like, there's no nice human way to put it. So he's dead. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait, isn't, didn't he say he's gone or something like that? Oh yeah, I think he one said of them he said way. gone and one of them said dead. Like mm -hmm. the show or the book. They flipped, one of them did it different. Mm -hmm. But it was so funny. It's, it's hilarious because he tries to be, one of my favorite scenes is later on when he's given kids, he's at the like mall doing yes. the appearance and he's like, what do you want? And the kid basically asks for a sword and he's like, here you go. I know. And they're like, what are you doing? You can't give her an actual sword. Why not? She wanted it. Because <laughs> it's not safe. <sighs> then it's a learning lesson. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. So now we're with Jack Frost for this one scene. He's talking to this little gnome and he's like, Are you a fairy? And they both realize each other weren't fake. Like, even the, I think that was the point saying, even the lifers, they called them, the like basically mythical creatures, creatures don't realize each other is not a mythical creature. Yeah. Mm hmm. That didn't happen in the show. So Spoo Spoozin. <laughs> Spoozin spoke. Spoozin. Susan spoke with Death about how wrong this is. Like, you can't be a skeleton showing up at kids' places and delivering presents. Oh, I also realized in the book, or no, not in the book, in the show too, he never, he tells her that the Hogfather is gone, but he doesn't make it seem like I'm taking over now. He's like, I'm basically in place until I can figure out how to get him back. Mm. And that's what then makes her like, Okay, I should help. Mm hmm mm hmm And he's like, we've already been to over a million houses. It's fine. Don't worry. And they left, and Susan spoke to the raven and the death mouse, and she ended up stopping time and turning back into her mm -hmm. magical self, and she rode on death's horse to do what she needed to do. Mm hmm And I love at this point that Albert, his little now, I guess, elf, we can yeah. call him, yeah. is, like, drunk because <laughs> Hogs Watch, they leave out little alcohol for the, <laughs> for the hog father. <laughs> so Albert's been uh, drinking and eating all the, the like, what, pig pies or whatever yeah. they are. Mm -hmm. and all the stuff that gets left out for yep. him. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was so funny. Uh. So the auditors are watching Susan, and they're making sure to pay attention to her. The auditors are, like, scarcely seen in the show. Yeah. I think this is the last time they were in the yeah. book, too. But, yeah, mm -hmm. they were, like, no. Yeah, they, you see them with the tea time thing, and then... That was it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, Susan went to check the hourglasses, and the life or hourglasses are in the smaller room. And she found the Hogfathers, and sure enough, it was out of sand. And she left, and there was a little tinkle, and then a spark of light shined in it. So this happens just with death. When Ooh. death realizes like, oh, something's wrong. I need to go help. Yep. Now we're back with the Chancellor Wizards that was at the very beginning. And he got his new bathtub. Mm -hmm. But all the wizards are really worried because the one who created it notoriously screws up. And so he's like, oh, whatever. I'm going to go do it. It's going to be fine. He goes in it and it's fine. Except for one tap, which is like old faithful it's labeled and he's mm -hmm. like we need to put a sign on it that no one can use that tap <laughs> <laughs> and so then when he comes out there's a gnome on his head 
And they found out that they are similar to fairies where they take and leave things. And he's currently taking his hair, I think, or something like that. Yeah, I think so. That didn't happen in the show, but the bathtub did. I can't remember because there was a reason why it was not good that they were in there. Yeah, the bathtub happened. So Jeff and Albert are chatting about how no one believes anymore. And Albert suggests doing a public appearance. Like the mall, that like hog fathers are always at the mall. And he's like, why? <laughs> There's fake hog fathers. And he's like, come on, it'll help kids believe. So they go to the mall and this hog father, like he takes over this spot. And death or Albert told him to work on his ho ho hos because yeah. he's like, I don't know. Did your audiobook reader every time he said ho ho ho, he did it kind of different. He's yep, like, ho, yep. ho 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 yeah. ho <laughs> ho 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 ho. Like, yeah. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Death was my favorite character because of this Sierra literally like when we were listening to it, she doesn't listen to books, and she was like, only reason I'm getting through this is because Death is hilarious. <laughs> So when I watched it and it was even better seeing on the screen, I texted her. I was like, you need to watch this. <laughs> like you didn't get to finish the story. So you have no idea how it ends. Uh-huh. And this is just amazing. So you need to watch it. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> so the high chancellor wizard gave toenail clippings to the little gnome. Oh, so he wanted his hair. I don't know. I don't know. I really didn't understand the gnome part really very much at all. Yeah. Well, I they didn't was like, even put it in the show. So. No, they did not. So now Death and Albert are at the mall. And the shop owner is shocked because, like, he had this very nice sleigh and the nice little piggies and everything. Well, now there's, like, this rustic, like, mm-hmm. almost dumpy looking sleigh with, like, <laughs> real pigs and everything. Like, the real hog father stuff. And he's like, what is this? And um, Death is having kids come sit on his lap. And, and the kids are telling him what he wants. And instead of normally the parents are like, they want this, which is what, you know, the parents are getting them. And Death keeps interrupting them and saying, what do you want? And so he gives them exactly what they ask. And that's what Brie was talking about. Where <laughs> this little girl wanted a sword. And the mo- and mom's like, we can't afford all this stuff. And he's like, well, I thought I was giving it to you. Yeah. Isn't it Hogs Watch? Aren't I giving you this stuff? She's like, what? It's mm-hmm. all free? And then, of course, the shop owner is freaking out, calls the police. <laughs> <laughs> this happens. <laughs> The high chancellor wizard showed the gnome to the other wizards. Again, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Whatever. Mm -hmm. So there is this little boy that's sitting on death lap and he's like, I know you're fake, blah, 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 blah. And then he leaves and death's like, he will regret that as soon as he opens his presents. And I'm like, (laughs) what did you give him? I want to know. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) So Susan's talking with the raven and the death rat and the raven let her know that Hogfather is not dead. He's just basically like on factory reset. Like he just wants to be left alone. But you need to go to the House of Bones, which she's like, that's not real. And he's like, you need to go. And the raven convinced her that it's real. So it's basically the North Pole. Yeah, that doesn't happen. She just goes there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the raven very much at all. The raven was not in the show at all. It was at some point because there's a cast thing for the raven. For like a split second, and I'm pretty sure it's when Death is in the house, Susan's house, or oh. Susan's nannying house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you see the raven and the little... Oh, wait, no, the raven's at the very end. Okay. He talks to her, like, right at the end, like, aren't you glad you're back? Or something like that. But it's not... It's not a character it, throughout. Th- him and Death Rat were such huge characters... I'm really sad they were not in the show more because oh, no. I lo- they were my favorite part of the book too, <gasps> apart so from cute. death. I thought they were hilarious. And it took me forever to realize that the rat was just a Grim Reaper rat. I was like, why do they keep calling this rat death rat? Like, what is he dead? <laughs> and then it clicked. I think they described him with a little scythe or something. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh. <gasps> Oh my god, <laughs> so cute. Why am I dumb? <laughs> All right, so the bad guys are chatting about how they don't like tea time, but you know, they got to do this for the money. And then we heard, you find out this backstory about how their mom died, and it was all sad. Mm-hmm. So a girl asked Death for a pony, and he's like, Okay, here, yes, it, it is in your apartment. And mom's like, We live on the third floor, and he's like, Oh, okay. Sucks. <laughs> and then Albert, they leave, and Albert's like, You really put it in their, their place? And he's like, Oh, he told him he put it in the kitchen. 
And he's like, no, I did not put it in the kitchen. I put it in their bedroom or yeah. something like that, <laughs> vice versa or whatever. But he like pauses so that Albert's like, oh, good. And he's like, I put it in their living room. Yes. <laughs> so funny. So I don't think that happened. The no. small thing only really happened that one scene. Yeah, and it was with the sword, which honestly, I'm glad it was that one thing oh, that yeah. it happened with, because that's the funniest one. That was the funniest one. <laughs> so Susan's looking around the House of Bones, and it's more like a graveyard now than like a little workshop thing or whatever it was supposed to be. And she hears this person, and she goes and finds him, and he's like moaning in pain, and there's this little imp smacking him on the head, and the imp's like, this is part of the contract. I have to do it. And Susan's like, I don't understand what's happening, but the place is starting to collapse. So she gets them out of there, and we find out that he's the god of hangovers, so he has to deal with everybody's hangover the whole next day. That sucks. <laughs> that was awful. I loved this god in the book, too. I wish he had bigger part I know. in the show. He was, I, really he was there in the show, and he was hilarious, but like not nearly as funny as he was in the book. Mm -hmm. So the shopkeeper called the police and the hog father is giving away things. The police are like, that's what hogs watch is all about. You want us to arrest the hog father <laughs> in front of the kids. And so the yeah. shopkeeper is just like battling, like, I don't, I don't know what to do. He's giving away my stuff, but I don't want to get all these parents upset. And, mm -hmm. But they go in and help. Mm -hmm. That happens. So Susan brought the God of hangovers to the wizards to hopefully help him deal with this and help her with death and everything yeah death tells albert blah, blah, blah. death mm -hmm. tells albert he is enjoying all these mm -hmm. shocked faces of the kids like he's like this is kind of fun because normally he has to deal with just dead people yeah mm -hmm. a nice little change for him mm -hmm. So they're trying to figure out how to cure hangovers these wizards and they decide to put all the remedies together <laughs> and then have him drink it but it's looking pretty dangerous he's like whatever I'm a god I'd rather die anyways than keep dealing with this but it works. Yeah, that that happens yeah. in the show, too. <laughs> so the cops went to arrest Death, but he gave him some toy that he always wanted as a kid. And he, the cop went back. He's like, we can't arrest you. Don't know the meaning of Hog's Watch. Like, let mm -hmm. him be. <laughs> so the God of Hangovers is excited to get payback on all the people that made him suffer. The wizards are all talking and they found out if they think of something, it comes to be. Mm. So they thought of like, like, it, it must be like, like, if you where do all your socks go? And then, poof, a gnome is there and he's eating all the socks. Mm -hmm. That happens. <laughs> <laughs> so Death went back to delivering presents and he saw people sad. And there's this kid that nearly died in the snow. And Albert's like, that's the part of the hogs watch. People suffer so others realize how lucky they are. And Death's like, no, that's not okay. This happens, but mm -hmm. I guess I'll say the difference here in a little bit. Okay. So Susan asked the God of Hangovers to help her with her grandfather. And she shared who her grandfather is. And the High Chancellor Wizards are do still dealing with the sock gnome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this happened except for she went into greater detail about like, he adopted this person and then this person fell in love with this person and this person did that. And then there's me. And I think that's because the Evolved. books, assuming mm -hmm. that you've read the previous books... Whereas the show is like, okay, this is oh. probably a one-off. Yeah. You might not know who Susan is and Death and all of that. So let's give that backstory. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. So Death brought the dying girl to the police to save her. And so she's warm and fed and all this. And Albert said, that's not how it works. But Death didn't care. And then these angels show up to take this girl to heaven. But she's not there anymore. And Albert threw snowballs at them. So the angels don't show up. And also the girl died in front of death and death instead like brought her back and then took her to the police to be like, here, save her. And Albert was like, uh, dude, what? Yeah. So this high chancellor is talking to someone about this machine that's made to answer all questions. Mm -hmm. It's basically an Alexa or a Siri. It's an Alexa, but it's it speaks in computer language still, so it just still does like plus, plus, blah, 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 plus, yes. plus, minus, <laughs> quotation mark. <laughs> so you're, the, first time, the first time that was talking, Sarah was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> well, this was written in 96, so yeah. that's actually pretty advanced yeah. for... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And so talking to this machine and about real things, fake things, and like the hog father and the tooth fairy, was it him or the machine that said they weren't real? 
he was saying they weren't real oh. and the machine was like false. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. And that happens. This was, I did not think they were going to keep this in the show and then they did. And mm-hmm. I was like, this is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so Albert is not happy about what death is doing at all. Yeah, that happens. Um, the wizards are trying to stop all these random things, but they keep popping up and someone mentions a cheerful fairy and here comes this cheerful fairy and she's not very cheerful. It's like a fairy that you need to make cheerful. Yeah, that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. That would have been hilarious. That would have been funny. Susan kind of looks like death every once in a while. Like she gets like these dark eyes and everything and it freaks the oh god out. That's what they ended up calling him (laughs) because he says oh god all the time. (laughs) Yeah, that doesn't happen. She always looks like herself. Uh huh. Albert's trying to get Death to admit they ran into Susan on purpose, but he played it cool like, I don't know what you're talking about. I was just delivering presents. That happened right after he was at their house in the show. Mm-hmm. So Susan was asking Igor, who I think was the bartender at the beers bar or whatever, mm-hmm. um, about some information. And she used her death voice on him, which isn't allowed. You're not allowed to do that to other, like, creatures, magical creatures. But she's like, this is important. I need you to tell me. So this doesn't happen, but her death voice does happen. And it happens early on with uh, what I would call a boogeyman. Right. But it, they call it bogeyman. Right. And then she uses it again once later in the show on uh, one of tea times like henchmen dudes Mm -hmm. so albert and death saw something going on and death like that's not right and they went off to fix it and albert's just rolling his eyes because death's breaking all these rules Mm -hmm. basically albert and death really get into how things are not right after death saves that girl like this whole part doesn't happen because then he gets mad because death is like death death is starting to steal like people's food he's like well they're leaving all this other stuff out for me and i really wanted this instead albert's like no (laughs) you can't just do that (laughs) so susan and oh god were looking at the records of this magical place and they realized they're tooth records and the last one was from this guy named banjo which is one of the tea time bad guys and susan and oh god went to like this university place or that's where they were looking mm-hmm. at the records that's where the that's where the wizards are okay oh, oh at yeah, that yeah, university yeah. okay mm-hmm. and oh god just really is like oh, man i just want to get drunk <laughs> i just want to i can get drunk without a hangover now i just want to <laughs> <laughs> so this happens except i don't think oh god really wanted to get drunk in the show did he I can't remember. I don't think he did. Okay. He was very, he sadly was very much a background character I in know. the show. He was kind of a main yeah. character in the book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I really, what's funny is when I read the book, I didn't feel like he came in this late in the book. Because mm-hmm. literally one of my notes is, where's the hungover God? <laughs> <laughs> and then he was just like so minimally in the show. I was like, oh, I know. That's sad. Yeah. But okay, I guess at least he's there. Mm-hmm. Um, so Susan and Ogod start looking at all the Tooth Fairy records more and they figure out that she was locked in a castle somewhere and they knew that that's where they had to go and they had to go save her. And Ogod was hesitant, but eventually he agreed and they went. Mm-hmm. Another thing too is in the show, at the start of the show, Susan was putting the kids to bed and she saw a painting on one of the kids' walls and you could hear stuff well she could hear stuff from i'm assuming only she could because she's you know tied to that world and so later on she realizes oh i need to go that's the tooth fairy's castle Mm. so albert and death are talking about how it's not really fair that some people are rich and others are poor and dying on the street and albert shares a story about how when he was a kid he really wanted this rocking horse but he never got it and he just had to deal with it so that's just life and death is not all about this that happens pretty much after the girl Mm -hmm. susan and oh god grab a sword and it was death's sword and she's like be careful because this can cut souls from their bodies and they got on death's horse and went off to find the castle Mm -hmm. the high wizards are chatting and they're talking about the fairy of cheer and she has like blue chicken on her head but she's anything but cheery and like she's just the worst (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, this doesn't happen. Nope. 
Death and Albert are talking and we find out that Death stole a lot of food from this <laughs> restaurant to give to the poor. <laughs> and he's like, don't worry, I left something at the restaurant. I'm not just going to take and not leave. But Albert's still not happy. He's like, you're breaking the rules. Yeah, that does not happen in the show. <laughs> I wish it did. Know. <laughs> Susan and Ogot are in a child's painting. Mm -hmm. And Susan said they have to find a house because there's always a house in a kid's drawings. Mm -hmm. So when they're in this painting, that's kind of the tie in because then she's like, we're in so and so's painting. I can't remember the kid's name, but mm. she realized, oh, this is the kid's painting. We got to get yeah. to that house rather than just like, oh, wow, we're in a child's painting. So there must be a house. Right. It's because she had she already seen it. it. Yeah, that makes sense. So the restaurant owners start freaking out because all their food's gone. But Death left moldy boots mm -hmm. made of leather. So they're like, okay, we can cook those. And they start cooking up the shoes. <laughs> that doesn't happen. <laughs> so funny. Banjo and the guys are at the Tooth Fairy place and they're taking some money. Like the, this is, I was shocked at how far we went before getting back with Tea Time and Banjo. I know, I know. Same. Because in the show, they're like, it's like every other scene. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. They're definitely the, what you call like the B or the C storyline. Yeah. So Banjo and all the guys are at the Tooth Fairy place and they're taking some money and all these deeds and Tea Time cuts chicken wires like eyelids, which is one of the guy. Mm hmm. And Tea Time and Banjo, Tea Time said Banjo isn't going to save you because he's my friend now. And tea time left and the other guys wanted to leave, but they knew that they would find he would find them if they left. So they just had to stay and do what they're supposed to. He did not cut anyone's eyelids, but he found other ways to torment them and do this to them. Yeah. He basically screwed with the people who are working on the magical lock. So the locksmith is having trouble because tea time didn't say they were magic locks. And so tea time said, OK, you can go. And he's like, OK, but I still want my money. And he's like, for what? He's like, well, I came and I did part of it. I got like two of the locks open and tea time had Banjo throw him down the stairs. That happens. Susan and Oh God got to the castle and they saw a circle filled with teeth and they saw Mr. Brown rolling down the stairs. And what's funny is in the book, in the book, what did they say? So Mr. Brown, John's last name is Brown. <laughs> and one of the things that got said was like, did you lose your toot, Mr. Brown, or something like that? So then me and Sierra, <laughs> me and Sierra were dying because freaking the night before we had hung out with John and man, John sometimes just lets loose farts. <laughs> and he did it in front of Sierra. I was like, John, <laughs> what? <laughs> so then that was how that got said. And I was like, Sierra, next time you see John, ask him. <laughs> Or wait, no, it was like, did you lose your... Or wait, I said that, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, no, I remember what it was. Yeah. Anyways. That's so funny. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. So the reason he's collecting teeth is to have power over kids. Mm -hmm. And the bad guys let Tea Time know that they that there were intruders. And he's like, go take care of them right now. Yep, that happens. Yep. One of the Tooth Fairy guards that died ended up at the wizard's place. That one doesn't happen. Okay. So tea time is talking to the wizards and or the wizard, his wizard. And he had gotten the third lock done and he's figuring out that these circumstantial locks, which means they might be here forever because they have to figure out every circumstance that it needs to be like it needs. This one needs yellow light to light change mm -hmm. or this one you have to put in cold or like he has to figure out what it is. And tea time's like, well, you better figure it out. And he's like, OK, I, I have to. And Susan, oh, God, got away because Banjo was raised not to hit women. The locks in the show don't have to have certain circumstances, unfortunately. It's just they're magical locks that are hard to unpick. Mm -hmm. And the rest of that does happen. So Bilius, which we now find out is, oh, God's name, is introducing himself to one of the fairies. And she's freaking out because she did her job wrong and now she's captured by tea time and it's just the worst. So, yeah, that happens. But that happens kind of early on. Like the other tooth fairy gets brought into Susan and Ogod's gang right when they get to the tooth fairy mm -hmm. castle, basically. So death is 
talking with the hex robot thing the thing that knows all answers oh i remember kind of uh death so one thing about basically the hog father's light going out and uh him about to be dying at least what death thinks is that no one's believing in him so things need to believe in him and so he kept asking albert like how do we figure out that kids believe in the hog father and like that's why they did the public appearance that's why they're going and giving all the gifts and so they keep trying to check and see and like his light is going out still and he's like what so then he's like i know how i'll be able to figure out if they believe so then he goes and talks to the robot thing to be like hey do the kids believe in santa or not santa <laughs> the hog father and then it's like yeah they do <laughs> but it's like plus 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 yes plus 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 they do <laughs> um okay so susan and oh god oh yeah in the show it's not death that does it it's the wizards mm -hmm. who were talking to it the first time this the robot's only shown once in the show mm -hmm. so susan and ogot are in the room with tea time now and tea time is able to take the sword from susan but it doesn't work because no magic works at the tooth fairy castle the wizard undoing the locks figured out what the trick is he's like i know the circumstantial stuff and before he finishes because his tea time's like no you can go you did six of them you can go he runs down the uh, stairs. Yeah, yep. this happens. So the wizard's running downstairs, and all of a sudden, he kind of fumbled, and he's back in a memory of this bully he had picking on him, and he's a little kid again. So he's like trapped in a nightmare. This didn't happen. Instead, it was kind of creepier. Uh, he early on, I think at the bar or right when they got to this castle, he was talking to them about the scissors monster. And he was like, the scissor monster is going to come and attack. <laughs> and they're like, what? It's then when he's running down the stairs, he hides because he starts hearing this, oh, yeah. which is the scissors. And so he just sits there and it's like, oh, please don't get me. Please don't get me. But then he gets got. Bummer. <laughs> So Tea Time and Susan are talking and Tea Time lets slip of how they're going to off the hog father. And Banjo got sad and upset. He's like, what did you say about the hog father? And Susan starts to kind of egg him on like, oh, this Tea Time, he's he's getting rid of him. He's And he's just basically making him get more and more upset. But at Tea Time. Mm -hmm. So whole oh, fight happens and one of the brothers ends up dying i think it was chicken wire ends up dying and banjo got real sad and at one point tea time grabs susan's hair and banjo's like you don't hit girls and he threw tea time down the little place and he crashed into the pile of teeth so this kind of happens but instead tea time convinces banjo that susan is who is planning on offing the hog father and banjo starts to get conflicted because he's like we're not supposed to hit girls and then the rest of it happens so susan got into the locked area and it turns out it wasn't really the tooth fairy in there it was a boogeyman and she took care of it and she then appointed banjo as the new tooth fairy yep that happens death and susan meet up and they talked and she was upset because she thought he tricked her and he's like, no, I needed your help because the sun will not rise tomorrow if the hog father does not come back. And she's like, oh, my gosh, this is such crap. <laughs> Guess that happens. <laughs> Tea time shows up in the wizard area. Like it was almost like the teeth were a portal to the mm -hmm. wizard area. And he shows up to the university. Mm -hmm. And that happens. Yep. Death told Susan she has to do this because it's a human thing he can't do it she has to do it and the auditors are planning on taking away hogfather's soul mm -hmm. oh yeah the auditors do come up again at this at part the yeah yeah they do so they start racing and they finally catch up with the hogfather and the auditors are there and they're trying to stop her through like snowmen and all these things and death comes and destroys the snowmen and the auditors say that you're breaking their rules and he's like well you broke them first and um he destroys all the the auditors but then the hog father dies and susan cries and then her magic tears i don't know if that's why he comes back but he comes back and death and susan have a nice grandfather granddaughter moment 
So this happens, except it's not snowmen that they sent after. It's wolves. I know. I'm kind of bummed about that. That was made me sad every time I heard them yelping. Yeah. I was <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> I was rooting for the. <laughs> You're like, get her, wolves, get her, kill them, yes. kill Christmas. <laughs> oh. So Susan and Death are now at her house with the kids, and tea time shows up. Like right when you think it's over, I was like, oh, that was a nice end to the story, and I was like, oh, great, here yep. he is. Yep. Tea time comes and tells, hey, call the kids in here right now because he's holding the you know sword to her, and. Death winks at Susan. So she's like, oh, good. He has a plan. And this whole commotion happens and she stabs through death and kills tea time. And then she realized death didn't have a plan at all. And death's like, well, that's OK. You knew that the sword would go through me. Right. And she's like, uh, sure. Because <laughs> she did not know death could have died there. Who knows what could have happened? It was just chaos. Mm hmm. Yes, that happens. Death went back in time and got Albert the horse he really wanted. Mm -hmm. So cute. Mm -hmm. The wizards are enjoying the bathroom, but then something happened to the high chancellor and he locked up the bathroom for good. Yep, that does not happen. <laughs> the very last thing, we check back on the restaurant people and the restaurant is doing really well selling moldy old shoes. Mm. And that does not happen <laughs> either. <laughs> <laughs> and that is our story. Mm -hmm. we did it we surely did short and easy yes love it love that for us mm -hmm. <laughs> it's gonna be an easy edit yeah so imdb cast 54 members of the human race for this show that's actually kind of crazy that's more than i would have thought yeah well we'll start off with david jason as albert he was good he's so funny mm -hmm. Mark Warren is tea time. He was too good. Oh my gosh, he was so spooky. He was perfect. I loved him so much. Oh, he was good. He had good. this cute little high pitched voice and he goes, ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. <laughs> like Johnny Depp as Willy Wonka. <laughs> yes. Michelle Dockery played Susan and also the death of rats. Oh, cute. I didn't realize that. I didn't think he talked. Maybe she just did the squeaky noise. Probably. Oh, yeah, because he didn't. Um, he just squeaked, right? Yeah. In the show yes that's so he funny. didn't say anything but yes she was great mm -hmm. i liked her a lot mm -hmm. i actually thought i had to look her up because i thought she was who was doing the audiobook because oh, they sounded so similar wow mm -hmm. she was not <laughs> david warner played lord downey he was good he was just the guy at the beginning who oh, yeah. got freaked out by what's his thing yep he was fine i don't know who vernon crumble was mm, don't have to do that Nigel Planner played the wizard, Mr. Sidney. He did good. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Steve and Marcus played Banjo. He was really good. He was perfect for so what the book cute. was. I know. And Craig Conway played Chicken Wire. Yeah, yeah, he did good. He was a bad guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rod Rodri. 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 Mueller played wow. the Oh God. Bilious. He was hilarious. He was on. I kind of pictured a fat dude because like, you know god of hangovers yeah but i mean i guess also god of hangovers isn't the one drinking all the time right he's just hung over all the time poor, poor dude <laughs> but yeah he was good yeah so our narrator and death was ian richardson he was perfect so funny hilarious the best thing ever shend played hogfather <laughs> what an easy name <laughs> i love it <laughs> and then terry pratchett played the toy maker at the very end yeah yeah he's good mm -hmm. all right we did that mm -hmm. yay for us Woo. <laughs> we made it <laughs> oh it's the theme of the book and movie the same absolutely yep for sure do the characters stay true absolutely yep which do you prefer this one's so hard like i told ali i'm like it's hard because I really enjoyed the book, but I really enjoyed the movie. But part of me thinks that I really enjoyed the movie because I was like seeing the book brought to life. Mm -hmm. Do you know? I have that same feeling, mm -hmm. but I'm going to go movie because what I think I enjoyed most was seeing it. Yeah. Instead of imagining it. Does that make sense? Mm hmm. And there were a few times when we were doing this where I was like, I think it's book. Because, like, there were some parts that just weren't in the show that I was like, oh, yeah, that was actually hilarious. Or, like, when death takes the food. Actually, yeah, it's book. Okay. 
because I like when like death takes the food from the restaurant. I know, like, so screw them. <laughs> <laughs> like you're saying I'm supposed to be doing what I'm supposed to be doing for Hogfather and this is it. <laughs> this is what Hogs Watch is all about. That's so funny. Oh, oh man. Okay. So mm -hmm. would you recommend it to a friend? I mean, I technically already did with you Sierra. Did. You did. <laughs> so yes, I yep. would. Yep. Would you? I would too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was fun. I'm actually excited for when Riley and Tyler get a little older. Mm -hmm. Like someone had mentioned that saying that they watch this every Christmas or read it every Christmas. And I'm like, oh, I could see that. That's yeah. Kind of fun. I, I absolutely think this is going to end up being one of those for me because yeah. it's just it's so fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. So we have a sneak peek for you. Mm -hmm. Is it really a sneak peek? Oh, wait, we lied. We are coming back at some point. We just have to. I also. I guess we should have said this in the paint our picture. I started a job oh, two yeah, yeah. weeks, two and a half weeks ago. And so finding recording time has also been, <laughs> yes. been more difficult. adjusting and getting into a new routine is hard and not as easy as I would like. Yeah. So we have a recap coming for you at some point. We're hopefully, hopefully I mean, we next week is the goal, but yeah. we'll see what yeah. happens. We'll see how that happens. So at some point, recap. Oh, coming your way yes but anyways you should first go, go to, to our website uh -huh. <laughs> offscript 253.wixsite.com slash offscript yeah there you can actually i would love it if all you listeners would go and sign up to have us send you out some of our bookmarks to drop them off at yeah. little free libraries because mm -hmm. that would be cool that would be cool that would help us yep spread the word also if you go on our social media we have a um, giveaway. Yes. Where you can like, share and comment or like tag someone. Mm -hmm. And as of right now, no one's done it. Because so far, <laughs> no one's doing this. So go do it if you want either holes or the giver. Uh huh. Season six listener picks. I think we're pretty much set on that. We might have like one spot. So yeah, I think so. Hurry up if you want it. Mm hmm. Because by the time the recap comes out, no more. Yes. <laughs> Cut off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is what it is. Because uh -huh, we got to update our website and everything. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, Wednesday, probably not going to have many. So for you. Yeah, probably not. So I'm sorry. Probably not. We're going to figure out life. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Goal for season six. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think uh, on top of that, it's just like. It's the holidays and like I'm about to be I'm house sitting three different houses starting Thursday. OK, so. OK, <laughs> OK, let's do it. Recaps will be fast. Recaps super fast. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. OK, so we'll, we'll have uh, the recap next week. And maybe should we just do a mini so tomorrow? tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. OK, just kidding. We're going to have a mini so for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't know what we're doing, guys. This is how life is nowadays. So we'll figure it out. I really think after the holidays. It's going to slow down. Yeah. I'll know. I'll get more comfortable with my job. Uh -huh. I won't be house sitting three different houses. Yeah. It'll be better. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, All right, you well guys. Then. With that, off, off script went off script, guys. <laughs> off script went with the hog father. <laughs> Uh, oh no in case you didn't understand where our brains are at <laughs> yeah shit uh hog father went off script by oh, oh, off script went off script <laughs> thanks for sticking with us we hope you enjoyed it if you did we would greatly appreciate it if you gave us five beautiful stars reviewed and subscribed you can also follow us on Facebook at Offscript, on Instagram at Offscript Podcast 21, and on TikTok at Offscript underscore pod. Shout outs to Madame Shen Creations for our adorable logo art. And Adam Daniel for our incredible theme song. And to Creative Cinephile Productions for producing our podcast. See, See you, you next time. time.